Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought today we would go through some economy changes that I would bring in uh, to try and soften the blow of the economy for many who are struggling with it. Obviously it's been a pretty hot topic of late, even with people writing what seems to be manifestos about the ideas and all of that stuff, and still not really coming to, in my opinion, great conclusions. So now it's time to go through this stuff and uh, just to give you kind of a basis uh, when it comes to my thoughts on this stuff, uh, the issue with War Thunder is not necessarily grinding to top tier. As many people have shown, even some YouTubers, you can, especially in air, grind to top tier within a few days if you really want to. Um, the real issue with War Thunder is the fact that there are so many tech trees now and so many different vehicles that it is impossible to research them all and get access to everything while also, um, you know, maintaining basically everything else. I would be amazed if there's even one person in the whole of the game who has ground out everything in War Thunder without having to spend any money. So, let's get into my thoughts uh, on how to try and address this instead of just the standard thing, which is grinding to top tier. Because I feel like if you are just grinding to top tier, um, as long as you keep a bit of variety uh, when it comes to a nation, like play all of its different factors, you will be able to get there within a reasonable time. But if you decide to do that five or six or seven times with different nations, it's going to take you an incredibly long time. And uh, therefore, a lot of veteran players like myself are never going to have to deal with people who have like full on, you know, stuff like I do, which of course is an issue. So uh, let's get into the first point. The first one is simple. Just bring in the RP and SL reductions that should have come in when they released rank 8 air. Whenever they add in a new rank uh, for any um, nation or for, you know, the game, uh, what happens eventually is they reduce stuff of rank 7 and 6 to bring it to a level. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're still in a state of equal, well, not equilibrium, I should say. We're in a state of unfortunate, um, unfortunateness where that hasn't happened yet. So rank 7s and 6s and even 5s are still expensive compared to what they should be, uh, when you look at it relative to the new rank. This is something that they do quite a lot when they bring in a new rank. They wait they wait like uh, six months and then they reduce the stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is already going to be coming in June. But the thing is, this stuff should be done more proactively instead of reactively. And I understand why they do it. It's monetary wise. Uh, the addition of rank eight was ridiculous. I mean, I talked about it at the time. It's just a money grab. Like, <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. They wanted to put in a bunch of new rank seven premiums. Uh, they wanted to add in, obviously, the F-16 and the MiG-19. Oh, sorry, MiG-29. And it was all just designed to make money. Like, the, that's it. Uh, you you could... E there, there was a bunch of nations which still, you know, have very bare bones rank eight, and that's not really going to change for a long time. And it was easily in the worst state of any new rank that that I've ever seen um, in the game. So yeah, uh, I think in order to address that, what they have to do is actually just re readdress the RP and SL of the vehicles around it to reduce them, which I'm sure they'll do across the board. The next one is nation-specific boosters, which are higher than standard ones. So you know how you have um, universal backups, and then also you have nation-specific backups, mainly through the Battle Pass itself, uh, to try and promote the use of specific vehicles. Well, what if you had nation-specific boosters instead? So instead of getting the 15% or 10% boosters for 10 battles, what if you got a 25% or a 30% booster for 10 battles, but it was specifically for Britain. So you had to play Britain in order to research this stuff. Now these could be available in the Warbond shop, this could be available in the Pages of History events, this could even be available from doing special tasks, or pretty much anything, maybe even certain achievements in the game. Maybe if you reach a certain level of a certain tech tree, it gives you some boosters in order to use for a different nation to try and promote a little bit of variety and diversity in play instead of just playing the same things over and over again. This would obviously help with the idea of playing multiple nations instead of just playing the same thing.
thing over and over again, leading to burnout and also SL loss from individuals. I think nation-specific boosters is a nice idea. I know a lot of people want to go back to the times two times five stuff, which was around nearly 10 years ago now, um, and that's completely fine. I mean, obviously I'm not against something like that, but I feel like they're never going to bring it back because of the fact that they added in the booster system to replace it. So why not use the booster system to be able to address that issue? The next one is, um, well, basically utilizing the war bond shop. Um, so one of the big issues uh, for a lot of high tier vehicles specifically is they are very reliant on their modifications. Outside of the economy stuff, one of the big issues that I personally have with the game, which I think is the hardest uh, part of the game, is the stock to spade experience with a lot of vehicles. As somebody who's been re uh, spading a bunch of the Magak 6s, um, because uh, I just wanted to kind of get them done, uh, one of the things that you have a look at is most of the Magak 6s, surprisingly, are exactly the same stock. Uh, so if you have a look at the uh, 6B, 6M, 6R, and 6C, the major difference between them is actually their modifications uh, that they bring along, uh, with the 6C actually just being exactly the same pretty much as the A3 one, and the only difference is that it's heavier when it's stock. So the vehicle at 9 is actually worse than the A3 one, um, but once you get the modifications, it actually becomes more useful. So there, there is either one or two ways you deal with this. You either do the whole um, modification of BR based on uh, modifications, and that's something I've pushed for in the past and believe uh, would be very positive for the game, where you would have certain levels of modifications. Once you go into the next level of modification, it increases your BR. So therefore, for vehicles which have st stuff like stock heat effect, or vehicles which don't have countermeasures, they could play at a lower BR, and then once they unlock those special modifications, they would then increase the BR of the vehicle, and I think that would be a lot better. They've said in the past they can't do this, but then again, there's a lot of things they've said in the past that they can't do, uh, so I'm hoping that with this one, just like the others, it will eventually come in. Then the next way of dealing with this is finding a way of making it so um, you can get modifications for free. Uh, so the two ways you can get modifications right now is you can either grind the mouse or you can G them. What if there was a tertiary option um, which would be through the Warbond shop. So imagine if you had a box in the Warbond shop where if you um, if you you know unlocked it, you could get a free modification for a vehicle. So let's say, I don't know, you wanted to play the F-16 and you could select the F-16 from this box and then it would give you a selection of modifications that are available and then you could click one and get it for free. This would be down to what you have actually unlocked on the vehicle. And so if you only have like the rank one stuff unlocked, then you could only pick a rank one uh, modification, but it would just make it easier for you to kind of grind through. And I think generally that's would be more important because it promotes play of the vehicle and also promotes playing, uh, doing dailies and also getting the battle pass done because there's a lot of free SL in the battle pass, even if you don't purchase it. And by doing the battle pass and getting the war bonds, you could then get access to this um, box and then kind of push forward from there uh, with some free modifications, making the grind a bit easier for each of the ones. The next one is to rebalance RP and SL gains based around some loss of factors. So over the last uh, few years, what we've seen is a, a way of curbing botting through economy and also through gameplay mechanics. Most recently with the change log, uh, what they did was they removed the ability for naval vehicles to fire their main guns if they have their secondary or tertiary stuff selected. The reason for this is because that's what a lot of bots were doing with stuff like Kirch's. Uh, they were um, loading into battles, um, sitting on their secondary or, or third set guns and then um, their primaries would fire for them and then they would make SL and RP through that because they didn't have to pay for a repair for the Kirch. That was something that was happening a lot if you played naval. Then um, the uh, the next uh, part of it is also uh, they reduced a bunch of other things previously to try and curb this as well. So the tutorial awards, they reduced that so there wasn't as much GE um, around so people couldn't just buy like certain premiums and then kind 
kind of like bot them through that. There was also stuff such as removing um, the score got from being close to an enemy and stuff like aircraft. So they basically got rid of the score you get for defensively flying. They also uh, lost some score from being uh, shot at when it came to ground, like actually taking hits, because once again, this is a way that you could pot the game. Like you could just walk forward with a vehicle and then you could get shot a bunch of times, you get some score, and if you're using a reserve vehicle, then that's SL and RP, and then you just keep doing that a million times, and hey-ho, there you go. You got a bunch of stuff uh, for the game, and then you could either sell the account, or you could actually use it, right? So all of these, all of these things that were introduced were to curb botting but the problem is what you do while adding these things in is you also screw over the standard player experience so in my opinion what you've got to do from that front is since you're removing these factors you have to increase other factors to rebalance the amount of rp and sl people are getting so that means maybe you get more rp or sl for an assist or for a kill or for you know doing different things in the game uh, so therefore it readdresses that balance that you had before also um increase of the rewards in the game so basically supportive role stuff or uh, team play stuff i suppose you class it as so stuff like scouting help for repairing things like this uh, even i suppose assists if you want to stuff which um stuff which at the end of the day is more designed around um, team play because one of the biggest issues that War Thunder has always had is even though it's a team game it's a solo adventure most of the time most people play solo you know and generally even though it's much better to play in squads um, most people will just play by themselves and everybody tries to be a hero uh, it would be much better to try and promote different ways of playing so therefore it can be a bit more supportive and one of the things they're doing that in the next update is they're adding in more voice commands and stuff like that and voice call-outs which is super positive but why not reward people through actual incentives like rp and sl as well i'd also add a prestige system uh, we've talked about this one previously um for levels so once you hit a specific level usually level 100 uh, you could prestige you'll go back to level one you'll get a either special profile pick or a border on your profile or whatever uh, some cu some customizable thing and then what you can do is you can grind through the levels again up to level 100 and then do it again you could then add rewards through th prestige such as sl um you know or even xp or you know ge or whatever it, it doesn't matter what the rewards are just something uh, you could even repeat the rewards um, that you get from, you know, level 1 to level 2 and, oh, sorry, level 1 to 100 and then just add like a 2 next to them. Uh, so, <laughs> so therefore it's prestige level 2 and then when you prestige again, prestige level 3 and then so on and so forth. Pretty simple, <laughs> pretty 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 much a way of being able for a person to gain once again SL through levels just like the battle pass and other areas. You could also actually make convertible research points a little bit useful. Now, I know I've seen a lot of people say they would want a uh, a exchange with SL, basically. Uh, so instead of just exchange with GE, I don't want to do that. Uh, I think that would just cause a mess, especially when you have a bunch of players who have a metric ton of SL and also a metric ton of those points, what would end up happening is they just grind out everything in the game instantly and the gap between the haves and have-nots would increase. What I would prefer is you could make it so convertible research points could be used to unlock a few modifications on a vehicle when you've just unlocked it. So there could be like a period of time of a week or maybe a few days where once you unlock a vehicle, you don't have to purchase it or anything, or maybe you do, that could be uh, a part of it. But the idea is, is you could use your um, convertible research to unlock, let's say, one or two or three mods on it without having to play it. So once again, reducing that stock grind, uh, making it easier to go. So if you combine that with the Warbond Shop stuff, which you'd be able to only use once per vehicle, by the way, um, what you'd end up having is either like two, three, or four mods already unlocked before you have to take it into battle. So this would just make it a little bit easier for the people who are 
going around the place and also mean that you wouldn't have to spend money on it but there is an incentive to play the game more to get access to this xp and then push forward with it and you know kind of get it done the the other one is actually just let the players choose which mods they want to actually reduce instead of just the basic parts and fpe um, and this is only for some ground vehicles, by the way. Imagine if you have like a high tier ground vehicle and you have an APFSDS um, at rank one. So you would want to, you know, uh, make that one cheaper instead of maybe FPE. So uh, instead of just making it just across the board, the same things reduced, why not give the onus to the player to choose what mods they want reduced? They could pick like two, I don't know, a rank three and a rank four one to, to reduce. So then it's a little bit harder stock grind. But then at the end of the day, you would have way more uh, to actually look forward to once you get to those things instead of having to grind out like 25k uh, for one modification maybe it's reduced to make it a little bit easier for you to grind through there's definitely a lot of vehicles i would do that with and once again you're not losing anything as gaijin because basically they're just taking two things that were reduced making them full price and then just putting the onus on the player to choose the mods to reduce out of it so nothing really has changed in that regard the other one is just reduce, like if, if you're not going to bring in a system like that for ground aviation and naval, by the way, the one thing to do is just to reduce parts and FPE and naval. I don't know why they haven't done it. They're not interested in doing it or why they haven't. And it, it's very annoying because once again, there was this big hoo-ha about ground vehicles and how, oh, the, you know, the stock grind's really bad and, you know, you turn up and you just get shot a bunch and that sucks. But in naval, that happens all the time. And once again, they removed the they removed the fact that you don't get anything for getting shot at. So <laughs> it's it, it's even more harder to grind high tier naval stuff. It takes ages to get stuff like parts and FPE in a lot of battles. So for the love of God, like please reduce those things for players. Uh, I'll never stop banging on about this because it's one of those massive um, unbalanced parts of the game, at least in my head. Uh, the next one is rebalance certain vehicles that have equal or close to amounts of modifications at each level of their modifications themselves. So this is specifically talking about aviation vehicles. Usually ground vehicles are not too bad at this. There's some of them which don't make a lot of sense, but there, there, are, there are literally some vehicles in the game, if you have a look at them, uh, where they have certain modifications which are much more expensive at the lower ranks of the modifications than other ones uh, because they have less modifications at those tiers and it's just super weird uh, how that's the case um, it's happened for a long time with many vehicles the ones which i remember the most is stuff uh, like the sea venom for example the sea venom only has two rank four modifications when it has three in rank two and three uh, so you can move them about and make it a little bit easier uh, to be able to grind through uh, and then also there's a bunch of other ones who are just kind of sat there like for example for the venom right so if you have a look at the Venom uh, FB4, there are three modifications at, at rank three for its modifications and then four at rank four. This means that the rank three and rank four mods are exactly the same cost. So, so it just doesn't really work uh, in that regard. The same thing is actually for the Vampire as well, since they have incredibly similar mods. But this happens with a decent amount of aircraft, and in my opinion, it's just not you know, a great idea. Uh, it's much better uh, if these aircraft actually have similar ones, which they have pushed towards, but still aren't there fully uh, for a lot of vehicles. So, yeah, for example, if you have a look at the MiG-21 BIS, so for its rank 3 mods, they're 15k, and for the rank 4 mods, they are 14k. So the rank 4 mods are actually cheaper than the rank 3 mods which is just odd. And then it's basically 12K for rank one, 13K for rank two, 15K for rank three, and then 14K for rank four. So you can see that an area like that, it doesn't make sense progression wise. It means that if you are, let's say 20% of the way through grinding a vehicle, it is actually harder to grind at that point than it is later on when you actually have more modifications to your disposal and should technically be doing better. So that is something which would need to be addressed. They should also add in a cell bank, uh, which you can choose a portion of your cell goes into and then release at the end of the week with some kind of interest on it, maybe 5% or something like that. This would encourage saving 
And I know that sounds really odd, um, <laughs> because, you know, obviously War Thunder isn't a bank, and, you know, fiscal policy or fiscal responsibility shouldn't be something that a, a company should be worried about. But also, what this does is it means that people could manage their sell a little bit better and also have something to look forward to at the end of the week. So let's say you pick like 10 or 20% of your sell goes into this bank, and it's kind of a risk reward thing, right? So maybe if you're a player, who's low on SL, maybe you have um, a ton of it which just disappears uh, and, you know, uh, you won't have a ton of SL to use at the time, but at the end of the week, if you get, like, the portion back plus a little bit, um, it can then rejuvenate so then you can start, uh, keep growing and then people can kind of focus more on their SL gains instead of just, like, wasting it in areas and then kind of going through that. So it's a way of just promoting a little bit of fiscal responsibility and also just to kind of un more understand... Um, if, if you can survive without 20% of your SL earnings, but at the end of the week you get 25% back, so therefore you increase, you know, the overall amount, uh, maybe, maybe, like, you can modify playstyles, maybe you can change a little bit to improve it, and then at the end of the day, people get more SL, so that would be better. Uh, also remove SL chests, um, I have, and this is for multiple reasons. I don't like RNG. I think, uh, you know, uh, gambling slash gacha games are a blight uh, when it comes to uh, modern society. There's a lot of people right now, especially if you have a look at CSGO and other games, who are very much in the red when it comes to money because of gambling and gambling stuff that isn't really, you know, isn't really money, you know, whether it's skins, whether it's like in-game items and people are just going rampant for this stuff and I really don't like uh, what it's doing to it, especially since this game is not an 18 plus game. The, this game is not just designed for adults. So you have gambling systems within the game, and I think they should be removed. I really disagree with their implementation, and also how it's getting people used to the idea of gambling all the time with in-game stuff. And also, I've heard many people uh, who have just burned all of their SL on these boxes, and then, you know, start complaining about SL and not having any. And it's like, well, yeah, fair enough. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of the mechanism and why these things exist. You're never going to be able to get the amount back that you put in. That's just how these work, uh, just to kind of let you know. So then um, th what I would replace it with is blueprint vehicles from the Warbond shop. So just like you have the Builder Bear event, but instead you get a blueprint vehicle. So each each Warbond shop or you know each uh, each set of Warbonds uh, or whenever you want to do it, you could even do it each month if you wanted to, um, so you get a blueprint vehicle, which means that you can purchase a blueprint for war bonds from the shop, and then that gives you a set of challenges to be able to complete. Now, these challenges aren't timed. Once you purchase the blueprint, you get to keep the blueprint forever, but if until you complete all the challenges, you won't get access to the vehicle. Each challenge is uh, designed to be connected to a part of the vehicle, so once you get all the parts of the vehicle after completing the challenges, then you put it together, then you get the vehicle. Simple as that. It can also be a premium vehicle or a pre-existing vehicle that was in the game, so therefore people can get access to old event vehicles who have started the game recently. You could even do it with vehicles that were removed, like the PT-76 getting removed or other vehicles vehicles that have been removed like uh, even the SP2Ms or something like that. So just bring back old content for new people to get access to and also maybe give them ideas of premiums. I'd also like to see some kind of SL talisman, um, not just an RP talisman, and you would have to pick and choose if you wanted an SL or an RP talisman on a vehicle. Um, I think that would be super useful uh, just out there. Uh, obviously you know, I'd, I wouldn't like the idea of putting both on a vehicle because then you just basically convert it into a premium and there's, you know, a bunch of issues with that, especially with certain vehicles. But I would I would definitely want some kind of a cell talisman to be accessed to. Uh, then also the last one, which is the most important, which seems to be the one that they're focusing on the most now, which is good, is curbing botting. And I know a lot of people don't think this is important, and that's fine. You know, it, it doesn't... It, you've, you've got to understand the relationship between botting and balancing the economy. 
if you are balancing an economy of statistics and you have a bunch of bots that are in the economy which are either dragging it down or surging it up depending on you know how you look at it then that is going to affect the average player and i've seen a lot of people talk about how uh, they don't mind botting because they get to beat them up and yada 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 well imagine this so you have a situation where there's a bunch of bots in your game you're able to go crazy and annihilate them and get like 12 to 15 kills or whatever this happens every game so now they're going to look at the amount of money that you're making SL and RP wise and they're going to readjust the amount to be lower because they think everybody should be at a similar level so they'll readjust the amount that you get at the higher levels to more of what would be classed as the mean so now you're actually getting less for doing that and when you actually go up against proper players where you can't get those types of statistics then you actually lose out compared to what it was before where it was more balanced so they need to curb botting to reduce reduce the uh, I suppose that independent variable, if you want to put it that way, which is going to be shown through statistics, which they balance the economy from, right? Simple as that. And that is that is actually the major one. And hopefully it gets done over the next year. And it's also the one which is completely forgotten about when it comes to everybody else's like beliefs on the economy. A bunch of people sent me tons of like dossiers, tons of PDFs from different people about the economy and what needs to be done, including like reserve vehicles at different tiers and also, you know, different rewards for things. What was never taken into account was botting. And if you add in a bunch of those changes that people are asking for, all of them will increase the amount of botting in the game. Because what you're doing artificially is reducing the grind, which is fine, but also at the same time, you are reducing it in ways which will favor stuff like scripts that take over the game. The reason why I created this list the way it is, and also why I believe in a lot of these ideas, is because they will not increase that, which is something that as if you played naval if you played uh you know simulator air if you've even played air realistic when it came to just the landing and taking off stuff you'll know how many people are trying their best to uh to try and just game the system and you can't have this keep going you've got to you got to put a stop to it and the way you put a stop to it is through general mechanics but as a person who's interested in the economy and the way that it works, you always have to take that into account, right? So that should be the forefront thing in your head. How do you create an economy which can't be gamed? And I feel like with the points that I put forward, that you can't just game the system. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.